Pie charts and bar charts are used for displaying sets of labeled numbers. For example, here's some data showing the sizes of various animals. In this data, the labels are the names of animals, and the numbers give the size of each animal in kilograms. A bar chart of that data can be created using the bar chart function. In the bar chart, the size of each animal is shown by the height of the corresponding bar, and the chart labels option set to automatic causes the labels to appear under each bar. That same data could also be displayed using a pie chart, which can be created using the pie chart function. In the pie chart, the size of each animal is shown as the size of the corresponding wedge in the pie. An important consideration in choosing between a bar chart and a pie chart is the purpose of the chart. Bar charts make it easier to visually compare numbers with each other simply by comparing the heights of bars, while pie charts can make it easier to see the size of each number as a fraction of the whole pie. For example, it's easy to see from this bar chart that a deer is slightly larger than an ostrich and that a tiger is more than twice as big as a lion. It's more difficult to make those comparisons in the pie chart. It's difficult to determine visually, for example, if the wedge for ostrich is bigger or smaller than the wedge for deer, or if the wedge for tiger is at least twice as big as the wedge for lion. The bar chart is probably a better choice for displaying this data, in part because the size of the whole pie in this example does not have any special meaning. The whole pie here just represents the sum of the sizes in this rather arbitrary list of animals, and so it's probably not useful to emphasize the size of each animal as a fraction of that sum. As an example of a situation where a pie chart might be more appropriate, here's a data set that gives the percent by mass of the most common chemical elements in the human body. And here's a pie chart of that data. And here's a bar chart of the same data. In this example, the size of the whole pie does have a special meaning since it corresponds to 100% of the elements. The pie chart makes it easier to compare the size of each wedge with that total. It's easy to see from the pie chart, for example, that oxygen makes up more than half of the mass of the human body. It's more difficult to make that comparison using the bar chart since it's more difficult to visually estimate if the height of the oxygen bar is more than half of the combined heights of all of the bars. In technical applications, however, bar charts are still quite a bit more common than pie charts, in part because there are often ways of setting up a bar chart to make any important comparisons easier. For example, this shows a type of bar chart called a stacked bar chart, spe specified here by setting the chart layout option to stacked. The stacking of the bars here makes it easy to compare the oxygen fraction with the combined heights of the other bars. An important bit of terminology that's worth mentioning here is that a variable like the name of an animal or the name of a chemical or any other label that identifies a group or a category of things is called a categorical or qualitative variable, and a variable like a percentage or the size or amount or quantity of something is called a numerical or quantitative variable. In these examples, the names of animals and the names of chemicals are categorical variables, and the sizes and percentages are numerical variables. These examples were entered using a data structure called an association, which provides a convenient structure for associating labels and values. But if the labels and values are in lists, such as if the associations are separated into keys and values, the same charts can be constructed using the lists. For example, starting with the association giving the sizes of animals, this shows the same bar chart constructed using lists of values and lists of labels.